Um, Rachel, if it'd be great if you can just talk through what you're, you know, what you do um, and, you know, what you're doing now and how you came to having a discovery package with me in the first place. Well. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start there if you like, Tanya. Yes. So the, the reason I know that it was within the last three years is that three years ago, March 2018, mm -hmm. um, having been a regional director with the Athena Network, which is, of course, how we met, that is, yeah. um, I sold my franchise but stayed on as a member of, of Athena. Um, and so at that point, it was time for me to take stock, look at all the skill sets that I had, uh, look mm -hmm. at what I wanted to do, who was my target market, who, what was my bigger mission, if you like. <laughs> um, and, you know, what is it now? What, what, what was, you know, how could I put all this together? Mm -hmm. um, and at the heart of that, which had always run alongside my running Athena, was some business coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and a big part of that for me was presentation skills, training and mm -hmm. coaching. Um, now, sometimes within that, the, the coaching would be about people's story, but it was more um, about the actual presentation, the delivery, how to construct it, how to combat nerves, all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that was then that gave me one element of, mm -hmm. of what I could offer. So the functional side of it rather than yes. the story itself. Yes. Then it would be communication skills in general, mm -hmm. um, handling challenging conversations, um, having an ordinary conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I created trainings around all of that. Of course, I um, had been running training on networking for eight years. So that mm -hmm. was another thing. Um, I'm also a qualified and experienced counsellor, although mm -hmm. that's going back a little bit now, but I, you know, you don't ever lose yeah. those skills. So I could do the mindset, resilience and confidence piece. So I put all those things together under the umbrella of personal brand. Mm -hmm. um, and I created my, um, what's the word? Um, I have my system, if you like, my, my mm -hmm. signature process, which was the mm -hmm. nine elements of uh, personal brand. Yeah, and, I remember those. Yeah, and my, <laughs> my target market was to support women in the pro, uh, professions where they're mm -hmm. underrepresented at leadership. So typically law, finance, the services, as it turns mm -hmm. out, um, construction, that kind of thing. And that was what I came to you, Tanya, for help mm -hmm. with, because all these trainings and things, yes, I could do one to one coaching with people that I was meeting individually. But what I wanted to um, do with my business was to be offering training in house. Yeah. Um, and so that was what I came to you for a marketing strategy plan. Mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yes, it was. And that's what we worked through, wasn't it? And I helped yes. you come up with. Yes. Um, obviously, that was sort of aimed at helping people get to the next level. So promotion mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, so where that changed for me was just over a year ago. Obviously, we hit lockdown in March. And guess what? Promotion um, and the next step in career wasn't uppermost in anybody's mind. And it's certainly no. top of anybody's training was, budget. No. Um, so I kind of had to sit still for a bit and just sort of think, OK, where's this all going? How long is it all going to go on for? Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, I started offering just some one hour sessions on helping people craft a client story mm -hmm. into their um, networking minute, as it were. Yeah, um, so I remember that as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that was fun. That was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Got a lot of take up for that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of kept me ticking over. And it was sort of on the back of all that that my business coach then said to me, Rachel, I still don't understand in deep enough detail what it is that you do so that I can say to somebody, oh, you know, need to go and speak mm -hmm. to Rachel. So that was when I really had to think, um, OK, I had to take that on the chin. That was that hurt, actually, mm -hmm. because I thought, how can she not know? She's known me all this time. Um, but I thought, OK. No, no, that's really, that's always really helpful feedback to get, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It was really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, OK, if I had to choose just one thing out of that whole raft of stuff that I offer, what would it be? Um, and I thought, well, actually, it would always be the speaker coach, uh, uh, coaching. And it was almost like a what I call a soul whisper, because on the back of that came and the storytelling, helping people with their stories. Ah, so a soul whisper. What's a, yes. oh, that's an interesting term. That was a little phrase I heard the other day. And I thought, well, I really like that. And that's kind of exactly what it was, hmm. because I don't think I would have consciously articulated that for myself it literally was a little thought that popped into my head 
Mm-hmm. Um, thinking it's it's around helping people because my thing was in my speaking earlier on I used to think I didn't have a story and struggled to find a story to include in my speaking mm-hmm. probably around that three-year mark I'd kind of found it and, and recognized all of that but I also knew that I would had a particular knack of helping other people find theirs even though I wasn't even though I didn't know what mine was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So, yes, so yes. That's, that's, that's what I do now. So it's just, a, it was always there as mm. part of that bigger plan that you, we worked together on. Um, but it wasn't, you know, wasn't what, it wasn't the bigger thing. And now it is the thing, as it were. I think, yeah, yeah, it's, it's how things have evolved yeah. over the last couple of years. Yeah. So how do you, how do you think, did, how did the session help you and the, and the report afterwards help you also reach that well, I mean, the first thing I have to say about it, it was so thorough, Tanya, mm. wasn't it? Because we probably yes. had, what do we have, a couple of hours? On it's about two and a half this? usually, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you went away and you must have put in at least as long again, if not more, mm. putting together this amazingly comprehensive package, which gave me insight um, into not only the person that I was wanting to support, yeah, uh, the, I, the person that was going to be trained or coached, mm-hmm but also the people that were going to book me yes. um, to do that. And, you know, obviously when you're coaching one-to-one, which is what I'm doing now, they are usually one and the same person. Mm-hmm. Um, occasionally somebody has to get approval from a senior manager, but generally mm-hmm. speaking, I now speak to the decision maker. Yes. In yeah. a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but wh- when I was doing the personal brand stuff, the decision maker was never going to be the end receiver. No. Um, so they might have been a team leader. They might have been HR department. Uh, they might have been a CEO on, on mm-hmm. a smaller company. So that was a really, really valuable thing. Seeing the what was going on mm-hmm. because you created a really, really detailed avatar for yeah. both of those people, mm-hmm. um, which was really interesting to me. It was, and, and just yeah. on the point of avatars as well. Um, because I think I, I posted last week about avatars. It was it included sort of the demographic side of things, which often the avatars do include, sort of who they are, their age, their professional, that kind of thing. But also we looked at, didn't we went into what were their drivers and what their ambitions yes. and what their behaviors. So going into that deeper side of things as well. Yes. Why would they, you know, yeah. what would they get from from working with you or you yeah. know, from taking on your programs? Yeah, absolutely. And it was things like um particularly for the, the one you came up with for yeah. me the fact that uh I mean he happened to be a male in his late 40s of course mm. he could equally have well been a female but therefore his children were likely to be approaching university mm-hmm. age so he needed to work to support them mm. and then career-wise he could be looking maybe at easing back um mm. or whatever uh but also the, one of the key bits that came out for me was the fact that he had to he would be balancing his own ambition, whatever that might be, but also he had a, a, a budget to meet mm. and to use um, yes. and, and using it wisely. So mm-hmm. that, that really helped me to think, OK, so, you know, how can I address that for him? Yes. Um, yeah. So it's made, you took t- you took the thinking that bit deeper. Yes. That step further. Yes. As, yeah. As opposed to just thinking I need to approach this i need to approach the business because i know these courses will be good for the yeah then yeah. his his team is actually okay i need to approach this this person who's this yes. decision maker who again how will it benefit him as well because again at the end yeah. of the day, we're all human and yeah. even if we, we are doing it for our you know we've got budgets we've got our company values we've got our company goals again we've got our own personal goals which will in, in yeah. effect, you know inadvertently it will affect decision making Yes. And I think where that was particularly valuable, Tanya, I mean, I'd come across the concept of an avatar before, always struggled with it, I have to say. Yeah. I would have stopped at the avatar for the end user. Yeah. Um, And obviously, every time I was talking to somebody in an organisation, I don't suppose they ever actually matched the person that you had created. Mm -hmm. But it made me ask in my own head those questions. Okay, so Mm -hmm. what are the drivers for this person? Mm -hmm. Um, What is their career and personal ambition? Mm -hmm. And what are they grappling with within the organisation? What do they want to achieve within that? So Mm -hmm. it just it gave me that perfect example to know how to ask those questions for myself. So they give you a blueprint. So a lot of people say they talk about that report being a blueprint. Yes. They can 
they yes. can use and build upon. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think what we found out interesting as well with the um, the end user as well, we were looking, we did, we started exploring, didn't we? There was a possibility of there being a group of people that hadn't, you hadn't necessarily hadn't necessarily sort of looked at before those younger. Because I think you were looking more at slightly older people, weren't yes, you, as the no, end user, was. but there yes. was this younger group as well yes. of people. Yes. And that was that was interesting for me to actually look into that again from a personal point of yeah. view. Yeah, yeah. Um around this this group of yeah, it so young, it wasn't necessarily just females, it was males as well, wasn't it? It was the group yeah. of people who just passed graduate stage. So if you go on a graduate scheme, you get a lot of training and you get a lot of support. Um and then once you're into, you know, you're onto leadership programs you get a lot of support but there was this group in the middle that you know they they weren't necessarily getting that support and they were the ones that actually if you you know people weren't moving to leadership if they didn't have that confidence that necessarily they hadn't built their personal brand enough they would get left behind because they didn't have the confidence to be able to move from that graduate to that yes. that, that yeah. leadership they're so stuck in that middle so that was really fascinating for me process yeah. looking into that yeah being yeah. you know that that sort of lost group in the middle so yeah, and, um yeah no that was really interesting because that's the sort of you know that they, they were of the age group that my own daughter is at the moment yeah so I, I could kind of relate to it because i could think of her and her friends you know yeah. being in that scenario and and i thought well yeah that you know of course that is where a lot of them are at at the moment mm. yeah and if you don't have that naturally you've, you've not had access you don't naturally have that confidence or you've not had access to building your own personal brand you um then you know quite often you could get you can get stuck and you can get left behind so um so what would you say talk about the whole the, the package and the session session what would you say was the main benefit for you well I think it was having this blueprint to look mm. back at so that every time I was thinking of um approaching a, an organization or mm. wanting to do some social media posts or writing blogs or whatever it was I was doing mm. it was really coming back referring back to that report to think okay what do I need to address here what are the issues mm. is, is this am I focusing on the end user here mm -hmm. or am I focusing on the booker um, yeah uh, and I think there was something um I think for one of the things that you came up with and I think I did write this blog that I, you suggested that maybe I write a blog to help that younger person take the case to her mm. manager that was mm. going to be the decision maker as to mm. why she why they should fund her doing this course for yeah. example so that definitely would not have been something that I would have thought of for mm -hmm. myself um yeah I, I so, don't yeah. know so did anything come from that blog or uh I'm not sure because I think by the time I wrote that blog, we were heading towards lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think anything definitely came. Um, yeah, I think what, what the whole thing did help me with was the positioning of myself mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and interestingly, coming back to the thing I said about my coach saying to me, I wouldn't know who to recommend you to. Mm -hmm. One of the big pieces of work that I did pick up, and, and I'm hoping actually, even though it doesn't 100% fit with what I'm doing now, it's not a million mm. miles outside of it, will continue um, hopefully later this year, was that I was a network at a networking meeting chatting to somebody who is um, in the Royal Navy. I mean, I, I live not far from Portsmouth and this event mm -hmm. in Portsmouth. And I, I must have said the magic words to him about supporting women in organizations where you know they tend not to stay or words to mm. that effect and he did say ah i know exactly who to introduce you to yeah. um because one of his colleagues was very active on the naval service women's network mm -hmm. uh, and they were wanting to run some training programs aimed at retaining because only 10 percent of the um navy is is women mm. And not surprisingly, they lose a lot of those, particularly the ones that haven't come in at officer level. Mm -hmm. um, they're called the rates, um, so that they they are they they typically uh, you know a highish percentage of them will marry a male na naval officer, and mm -hmm. then the issue comes when they have a family, who's going to stay at home, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that that got me this ongoing piece of work. So um, 
Yeah. So, the, so is there, um, I assume you, you saying your focus is very much on the story coaching and it's, you know, it's brilliant and it's fantastic. And it's definitely, I can definitely see, you know, the traction and your traction you're getting with that. But would you consider the personal brand if, you know, opportunities, if somebody, you get those opportunities again, where somebody's going, actually, I know somebody who's um, to, for those sort of, yeah individual product projects rather than actually actively going out and um it depends what it is tanya mm, to be honest yeah um, if it was communication skills i probably would mm-hmm. um if it was anything too much beyond that i would possibly pass it on it really depends on, on yes what it is i mean um you know i did over the lockdown i did a few mm. lunch and learns that were about confidence building mm-hmm. and resilience because you know that's within my expertise um very, very not, relevant not, at the time yeah not sure that i would want to continue with mm-hmm. that often it comes in um i've just finished working with a client who was told he needed help with his presentation skills mm-hmm. um and you know all of the whole of that was in there we did confidence building to present Mm -hmm. uh yes finding bits of his story to include in his presentation Mm -hmm. but the whole gambit of presentation skills generally including interview practice conversational practice Mm -hmm. um the whole package because it was a six-month program so we had you know plenty of time to address all of those oh Um, brilliant and i'm sure the storytelling would that have helped with the confidence building having the stories to be able to i think so i think so because it helped him break the ice a bit i mean he's he's a data analyst and has an Mm. absolute brilliant mind Mm -hmm. um and of course sometimes when he's giving presentations that it is to other people who understand data at a very high level and frankly they're probably not going to be interested in the Mm. stories and so on but very often he's presenting to the end user yeah he's working on so in that sense Mm. I was his ideal coach because what he was talking about was going (laughs) you're like explain that one again yeah yeah. I would say stop 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 we don't need all of this just tell us what it's going to mean for us yeah and get him to include some stories to make him a bit more human if Mm. you like and you know he was he's a lovely chap and um he does have a good sense of humor and so he enjoyed adding those little bits about himself oh brilliant um, yeah so it, it was yeah. good yeah oh yeah. fantastic so what would you say to somebody thinking of using services my services or you know even just thinking about getting a marketing strategy and a plan I would highly recommend them to come and have a, at least a conversation with you Tanya for mm-hmm. sure um I would say that although it might feel like a big investment at the time it is so much at the core of what they will then go on to do to market mm. their business that um for me it you know uh it wouldn't have taken much in the way of a booking to have more than reaped back mm-hmm. um that that benefit mm-hmm. um and in fact you know I, I can't remember the sequence of events now but um mm. you know certainly with with this thing this project i'm talking about that that's you know that's more than covered mm. my investment with you and it, it mm-hmm. you know i'm guessing it would be the same for most people because if they're you know, there's depending on the level of your business, you invest accordingly, don't you? But yes, I would you do. Say, um, I would say you over deliver, Tanya, which is a good <laughs> thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I would I would say that. Um, and you've said it yourself, Tanya, haven't mm. you, that it's all very well doing all these marketing things like blogging mm. and but you kind of need to have a purpose mm-hmm. to it. Um, and I think the, the the blueprint that you create for people brings them back it provides that blueprint and mm-hmm. they can recreate it and do it again and again yeah they can build on yeah. it as you say it's yeah. like a template as you said the avatar yeah. wasn't necessarily somebody you spoke to but it gave you an, an opportunity to give you something from which you could say okay these are questions I need to be asking this yes. is this is the kind of idea so yes. um yeah and as I say others have said um with the actually having a look at you know, this is what I'm trying to offer. Having that actually played back on a page has helped as well. Yeah. Um, as something yeah. to refer back to and then build upon. But yes, you say it doesn't stay in stone. It's it's not set in stone. It's something that you can yeah. you can use. You can again, I encourage people to use it as a point point of reference when you as you know, this is what we've come up with in a conversation between us, but also talk to your customers, use, take what we've come up with and use it to test it with your customers and build upon as well so Mm. um yeah so as you say it's like having that that 
starting point that foundation because you say you can invest in you yeah. say you can invest in a lot of social media you can invest in um blogging in um you know an amazing beautiful website but a, an all, there's so many things you can invest in on the marketing front but again if it's not there's no foundation no beneath underneath it then yeah, yeah you can it can be money being you're throwing money to the wind Mm, yes yeah. and so, your report was just so comprehensive that mm, um, I did go back to it many many times so fantastic yeah. that's good to hear that's good to hear so what's next with the storytelling and how can you know if people Ooh. are interested in the storytelling how can they find out more well if they're interested generally to have a chat um mm -hmm. you can go to my website have a look at the work with me page and there is um, an option just to book a, a, a 30 minute call with me mm -hmm. to see how I can help you. I, if they're watching this sort of now and not too far ahead from today, which is the 8th of June, I think. Yes, it's um, the 8th, yep. I've got something quite fun coming up <laughs> next month or around stories. It's just you a, can see a fun day. I'm not saying any more than that at the moment. Oh, so, um, is it going to be a big surprise? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, in order to make sure you hear about that, either get in touch, get onto my mailing list on the website. I've got a, a series of um, five short videos called Your Story Matters, mm -hmm. um, which is to encourage people. They're all different, addressing different reasons that I hear mm -hmm. from people as to why they don't share their story mm. um so you know get onto the mailing list so that you're among the first to hear about this fun thing um i'm on linkedin so connecting mm. with me on linkedin yeah absolutely and I've, again i've gone vouched for rachel's mailing list some all, always fascinating stuff that comes through so join her mailing list um Thank you. it's yeah and um yeah and linkedin as well I yeah i think on my to my mailing list i send out a monday morning it's, it used to be a Monday morning mm. weekly tip, but it's, sometimes it's a tip, sometimes it's a story. But um, yeah, so it's a yeah, it's a variety, of, a variety yeah. of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But never more than one hundred and fifty words because I feel mm. people have got time on a Monday morning. To read too much, but, uh, <laughs> I don't think people have time generally, do they? To read no. it all for <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so thank you once again, Rachel, um, yeah. and all the best with the storytelling. And yeah. I'm going to be looking out to find out what this thing is. I'm going to be looking out for your <laughs> emails now. Um, I'm intrigued to know what this thing is next month. So yes, do if you're interested in learning more about sharing your story. And as Rachel says, we all have one in us. Mm -hmm. And as in that example with the the data an 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 analyst, put my teeth back in. Um, it can really bring. Um, bring your presentation and what you're sharing to life. So yeah, go and check Rachel out. <laughs>